when you're working with images in Photoshop, because they're primarily raster images or bitmap images, you, it's really important to be able to select a area of pixels, an image area, as opposed to an object. And you have lots of different selection tools. We're going to get started with the marquee tools and ways that you can create a basic um, rectangular oval shape, but also transform that shape or add to those pixels. Here we go. The marquee tools actually are a selection of them, and you got the rectangular marquee and the elliptical, and then you can even create a single line, either vertical or horizontal, row and column. Let's start with the rectangular marquee. And I'm just going to take my mouse and click and drag down to create a selection. And now that selection is going to act like a, a boundary, like a force field. And if I were to do something like paint, it's going to paint with inside that selection. So notice that I'm just painting inside of that selection. I can't go outside those bounds. I'm going to use my history and just return back. And with history, it's interesting, I can actually go back to where um, I removed the paint, but I still have the selection. I can even go back to where there's no selection. So selecting is going to be a step in the history that you can actually undo or redo as necessary. And that really can be handy because a lot of times we have a selection that we need to adjust or make changes, and sometimes um, it, just, it, it just needs to be updated. Well, I've got my selection. I'm going to go back to my selection tool here, and I can add to that selection. If I were to just click and drag, I'm actually making a brand new selection. So keep that in mind. As you click and drag, you're making a new selection. But if you hold down the shift key, notice that that marquee has a little extra plus sign. Now I'm pressing the shift key. Let go of the shift, press the shift. It has a little extra plus sign there. It means that I can now add to the selection. So if I wanted to get maybe a a blocky version of this balloon. I could do that by adding the selection. If I use the Alt key, the Alt key is going to let me remove from the selection. So there we go. I'm removing pixels from the selection or from the group. So using either the Shift or the Alt. Now, there are options up here where you can choose a new selection, you can add to the selection. This would be equivalent of using the Shift key, or you can subtract from the selection, or they even have an option here for the intersect. But what I found is just knowing how to do the Shift or the, and the Alt has, has really a great time saver, and it's worth the effort of doing that little extra bit of keyboard shortcuts. So there's my basic rectangular. Now in addition to the rectangle, you also have elliptical, which is going to give you something like a circle. So let's go ahead and just make a new selection here with this circle. And there you go. There's your selection. Um, and again, if I were to hold down my shift key, I could add to that selection. Or I could use my alt key and I could remove from the selection. So it removes some elements. Even take <laughs> a bite out of it. There we go. So you got the shift and the alt. Now with my selection tool still active, I can use my arrow keys, my up and down arrow keys to nudge it in place. I'm not actually moving the pixels because the tool is still a selection tool. So I'm moving simply the selection area. For a more dramatic effect, I can use my shift arrow keys and it moves it at larger increments. In your Select menu, there's also a feature called Transform Selection, and this allows you to make some changes to your basic selection. It creates a bounding box. And one of the things that I could do is I could resize the selection. I could rotate it. Notice that my handle gets a curvy. I could rotate it. It's a great way of creating a, um, a slant, a slanted um, or an oblong shape. And I could even squish it in a little bit there. So that's a nice um, option for transforming the selections. Once you change it, you still have that bounding box. It's not actually a selection until you commit it. You can either press Enter or up here on your Options dialog box, you can click on the check box, and that's the same as committing it. Incidentally, if you were to press Escape or you click on this symbol right here, Cancel, it'll actually um, 
remove the changes, so let me go and click on that, and it goes back to the way you had it before. I'm going to go back here to select to transform selection, and in addition to rotating and sizing, there's also an option here where you can switch between your free and your warp mode, and the warp mode gives you a few extra options that you can do with that selection. And again, it's not changing the pixels, it's simply changing the way the selection's going to work. I don't really need to do that much, but if I wanted to create some interesting effects and be skew it a little bit, I could do that. And I'll just either need to accept it or cancel. I'll go and accept it. And now I've got my interesting selection that I made with the traditional um, tool, so using these geometric options. Now the single row marquee and the single column marquee is just what you would think. There's just a single row or a single column. And you might use something like this if you're going to create a tile effect, maybe for a website or for some other effect, or if you're trying to fill that with a color. Let's just switch these to white and fill that with a color. How about white here? Click on OK. And now I'm going to deselect so we can see what this looks like. One way to deselect is to simply click somewhere else and you get that, create that effect, that hairline effect. Um, another way to deselect is with the select menu, deselect, or here's a great keyboard shortcut, control D. And it's easy to remember because you are deselecting, so you can control D to deselect. Let's go ahead and click on that. Remember that all these steps are now captured in our history, and we can use this to go back in time. And as we're going back in our history, we're actually seeing the different elements that we've set up. Okay. Well, here's a few more things that we can do with select. I'm going to go ahead and control D to deselect, and I'm going to use my oval tool here, my elliptical, I should say, elliptical marquee. And as I'm selecting, I want you to notice that the top left-hand corner is becoming my anchor point. So everything that I'm selecting is relative to that top left corner. And sometimes what I want to do is I want to select from the center out. So if you hold down, if you're one of your selecting rather, and I'm going to make sure that nothing is chosen right now. But now that I'm trying to select, I'm going to hold down my Alt. And while I'm holding down Alt, now my, my anchor point becomes the center. If I let go of the Alt, the anchor point is that top left corner. I add the Alt, it becomes the center. Go ahead and do that. And now if I use my, um, my Alt key and let go, so far so good. I have that interesting shape. Um, I have to be careful here because if I start drawing right now, um, so I wanted to get this circle here. If I start drawing right now with the Alt key, I'm potentially removing pixels and I'm not actually centering it. So what I want to do is start drawing first and then add the Alt key to add to those elements. So that makes it a little tricky when you're trying to do those selections and it's probably going to be easier to make a couple of those selections one at a time. One other thing that you can do, I'm just going to go ahead and deselect here, is that when I'm making a selection, and you can probably see it best right now, I can make my selections in in irregular shapes, but if I want to keep it as a perfect circle, I'm going to hold down the shift key. I'm going to hold down the shift key and actually constrain it to perfect circle. And you can do that also with, let's go ahead and deselect here, you can also do that with a rectangle. You can make a rectangle shape, hold down the shift, make it into a perfect square, hold down the alt, size it from the center. Shift and alt is a perfect square from the center. So it gives you a lot of nice options in there. Let's go ahead. I'm right on the edge, and so I can actually move that selection where I want to put it. So there's my selection. And with that selection, I'm just going to do a layer, new layer via copy, or control J. I always think jump to a new layer, if that helps, but layer via copy. It's kind of hidden in a weird spot there. But that's going to take my selected information, it's going to make it into a new copy, switch to my Move tool. It's always important to be, what tool are you on? And then I can move that somewhere else. Maybe I would put that into a different image or a different layer. Maybe I'm just going to create an effect where I position it here and I'm going to add some text to it. Um, 
And as always, you can access these short these tools with your keyboard. Notice that the mar the marquees use the M to access them. So if I press the letter M, I'm going to access the marquee. And if I use a Shift M, I can toggle between these two tools. If I go ahead and open them up, there's a few tools, the single row marquee and the single column, that I can't access with the M, but I can, that's because, that's okay, because they're not um, frequently used like the way the rectangular and the marquee will be done. I will tell you, let's go ahead and make, make our way to the background layer. In fact, I'll just go up here to my history and revert that is that often what you're doing with these geometric shapes is they're great for creating like a, a frame effect. So if I were to just make some option, and I'll use, I could use my shift command or something like that, maybe not, I'll just make a kind of an eyeball it. And I've got this effect, let me make a new layer real quickly so I'm not painting on the background. And when I go to edit to fill, I can fill this, let's say with white and um, Oh, sorry, that's not what I want to do. Let's choose cancel there. I didn't, didn't want to do fill. I want to do edit stroke. Stroke is the border. There we go. And we can do white and maybe put in something like 10 pixels. Click on OK. And let's deselect it so we can really see. We can do Control D or select deselect. And we create that frame. And that's the nice advantage of using something that's very geometric and clean cut like these marquee tools. All right, well, now it's time for a pop quiz. Which command do you use to rotate a selection? A, select menu, the transform selection. B, edit menu, transform. C, select menu, rotate selection. D, select menu, refine edge. The answer is A, Select Menu, Transform Selection. Well, now you have quite a few tools using the marquee as a way to select geometric shapes in your Photoshop images to create a frame or to simply create a boundary for doing some editing.